What's up, State Champs Nation? It is time to recap what took place in high school football over the weekend. This is State Champs Extra Point. It's actually the only time I get to wear the Extra Point gear anymore since we no longer have the television show. Uh, but uh, let me quickly uh, go around the room. we got a lot to talk about. Uh, Matt Mowry, John and the Kid, Sean Belisian, Scott Bernstein. So we've got a full yeah. house in here, Kia Titus running the wheels of steel over there. We're all the color corner. coordinated. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Back and black. Exactly. Back and black. We all called each other before the show just to make sure. I know we do that. We do that. Okay. It's not a vain. Fashion thing. is first, you know, foremost for the mm -hmm. state champs. Right. We're represented. So, uh, again, if uh, you have just kind of stumbled across this, we'll be doing this all football season long. So, Mondays we record these. These get premiere at around 5 o'clock. Uh, that's the hope at least, you know, depending on how things work technology-wise. But you can catch it on our YouTube page. You can listen to it on all the audio platforms. Of course, uh, Facebook and Twitter will cut up some chunks and stuff. You can absorb it there. Football mm -hmm. forecast is Thursday. That's our preview show. So make sure you tune into that. Same guys. We're going to talk about what's ahead, what's going to be happening, and uh, and then extra point on Monday. So that's your setup. Uh, I'm Lauren Plants, by the way, and uh, we're going to get into what took place. And this was a really intriguing weekend, gentlemen. Uh, I would say that right off the bat, um, we had some stunners. We had some outstanding, unbelievable individual performances, if you want to call individual performances in football. Of course, everybody's got to contribute to that. Uh, we also had some uh, amazing teams step up and some teams still got some work to do. So let's start with uh, PKC. We talked about that on Thursday. We knew this was going to be a good slate of games. <coughs> Thursday, Friday, Saturday, some were good. Yep. Some were not good. Uh, Scott, you were there yeah, uh, I, all I, weekend. I went to the PKC. I, I ended up seeing, like, I saw five games. It was like a, a monster movie quintuple uh, uh, you know, uh, feature where I just saw, you know, I saw like Godzilla dressed as Justin Rogers, Bill right. Park, offensive lineman, linebacker. I saw King Kong dressed as Keegan Kogler, the Catholic Central running back in his first start running for 250. Right. You know, I saw uh, the Predator in uh, Daquan Finn, the Detroit King quarterback, uh, just destroying oh. the, the uh, East St. Louis, uh, uh, the, the visiting East St. Louis defense. Just some great performances. Yeah, a, a lot to, uh, break out the popcorn and, and get down to it. Oak Park took care of you to Eisenhower, 31-13. Uh, John, you know, you were there uh, along with me and filming that game. What were your takeaways? Oak Park's going to be a, a strong contender in Division II. Uh, you know, Dewan Mathis had his moments. You know, he ran for a four-yard touchdown. He had that 26-yard touchdown pass. Mm -hmm. Overall, you know, Oak Park with Justin Rogers, I, he's he really impressed me. I can see why. 50 offers, is that correct? 50 offers? Five star. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's a beast. Oh, yeah. I mean, Did you see that pancake? Well, I was going to say, well, yeah. well, first off, you know, for the last two years, he's been, you know, offensive lineman, best offensive lineman in the state, uh, in the junior class, mm -hmm. one of the best in the country. Um, he's 6'5, 300 pounds. He looks like he slimmed down a little bit and took about 10, 15 pounds off, so he's a little mm -hmm. uh, uh, spelter. I don't know if it was really all that noticeable, <laughs> but I, I yeah. see what you're saying. But he, he was swifter, it looked yeah. like. But, but what was so amazing was that this is his first year. He's starting at middle linebacker hmm. on defense. He had 12 tackles, a sack, and then he just exploded through the line on a play and blew up the uh, uh, the I quarterback. And give uh, Eisenhower credit because they were down 19 to nothing yeah. in the first half. And, you know, people are talking about Chippewa Valley and Macomb, Dakota in the Macomb County. Don't forget about Ike. I know they have to replace Max Whitworth. And uh, Caleb Oyster, you know, yeah. the, run uh, the running back there, had a couple touchdowns. So, you know, don't count out Ike in the Macomb area. I would agree wholeheartedly. I thought that game was really going to start to get ugly mm -hmm. at some point because it did look like Oak Park was kind of defensively having their way with the, the Utica offense. But again, credit the coaching staff and what they were able to do. They made adjustments. They they, they realized, look, we've got to put the hand the ball in the hands of our playmakers. Caleb Oyster is a playmaker, mm -hmm. and he made some really nice plays. Hey, let's move over to uh, Detroit Catholic Central. Uh, they beat Wald Lake Western, beat them pretty handily. Uh, and again, I think it's, it's an issue of where you had two teams coming in, Sean, with a lot of uh, hype. 
And uh, I love these matchups early on. We want to see what each team is made of. And again, we can talk about it all day long that just because you lose doesn't mean you're going to learn and take something very valuable away from this. CC showed up and said, we are ready to play. Yeah, if you watched our show to, to preview the season, that's one of the things that we were talking about with Wald Lake Western. I think the team in week one isn't going to be the team that you see two, three, four, five weeks from now. Let's, there's hope, a lo- let's hope for their sake. Yeah, well, there's a lot of transition. I mean, let's face it. I mean, coaching, players, et cetera, et cetera. There's a heck of a lot of talent on that team. I think much has been made of it. And CC just going CC. I mean, really. I mean, that's the best way to say it. I, I think uh, Coach Anderson has just done such a tremendous job in transitioning that. But uh, like you guys both said, listen, that was that was CC. Make no mistake yep. about it. This 28 to seven score really told you what happened in this game. It was all CC. And they really controlled the clock in that game. Yep. They had like a couple nine minute, eight minute drives that just killed. You know, just kill the momentum for Wall Lake Western. Keegan Kohler. Keegan Kohler. Yeah. Uh, first start, 250 yards. Yeah. He fumbled his first. <laughs> first snap. Yeah, amazing. First yeah. carry of the year. Yeah. But he was just shredding. 25 carries. He was just shredding through that Wall Lake Western defense. I mean, six, seven, eight, nine, ten yards on every carry. We're going to bring Matt Mowry into the conversation. And Matt, you know, you were at the big house all weekend. And, uh, you know, the Clarkston Granville matchup we talked about on Thursday, we were expecting to to see, uh, I would say, overall, a different kind of game? You were there 12-9? Well, in, in we talked about Smash Mouth with CC, and that's what Clarkson's mm-hmm. going to have to do all year long, and that's what Granville does. And so we had six first-half possessions total between the two teams, and that's only because each team of the five passes that were thrown threw an interception. So they're going to hand the ball off, mm-hmm. hand the ball off, and drive the field. Uh, Clarkston stopped Granville twice inside the five, and then the play of the game was right at the end where Granville was getting closer, getting closer, and Clarkston's got a punt with under a minute left, and uh, punt sails over the, or the snap sails over the punter's head. Well, and we've seen that before. Yeah, <laughs> in, that, in that same end zone, too, and brilliant play by the punter who gets back there and has his wits about him, and Tristan Matson just shoveled it through the back of the end zone for a safety, because if he tries to fall on that, you know, it's Granville score or score the next play, and that's even Granville coach Eric Stiegel said, his, his thoughts on his mind is, how smart is this kid going to be? And it turns out brilliant, and you know, so they free kick away, and then Clarkston stops him on four plays. And really, Clarkston's going to go as that offensive line goes. All right, let's, let's uh, jump ahead. So uh, one surprise, I can say that I properly predicted. A work of art was by Davison Davison yeah. beating Southfield A&T uh, 28-6 to the final. And they may not have been that close. It, you know it, what and I mean? Davison's got a team, literally less than two dozen players on that roster, going up against a team in Southfield A&T that's got 60 kids on the roster, <laughs> 10 Division One college sure, recruits, too. and they, Davidson being dominated. I mean, <laughs> dominated. K, uh, Cannon Hall, senior quarterback, a force of nature for Davidson. Uh, he's going to Northwood. He was the best player on the field by far, uh, accounted for all uh, four touchdowns, uh, and yeah. just, uh, you know, they, they imposed their will. And, and Southfield A&T had no answer. Yeah. You know, I didn't see the game, Bernie. That's what I was intrigued at. I was intrigued at the six. Yeah. You know, I mean, this this electric offense, this was an, uh, an explosive offense. Six. What did Davidson do right? One of our top plays that, that was most viewed on Twitter was yeah. Brandon Sullivan from Davidson. I don't know if you guys saw that on Twitter. Yeah. Where oh, yeah. He had that touchdown, and yeah. he, you know, sh- you know, took the head and brushed it off, and he yeah. flexed it. I was yeah. like, wow. Kid, you can show that they were not afraid. He <laughs> bounced off him. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, exactly. He loves that. You know that's going to be on his yeah. his gift forever. Yeah. Yeah. Running in the end yeah. zone to yeah. run it over that guy. Well, speaking of looking good, and I will credit Matt Mowry here when we were creating our watch list uh, for Mr. Football on our first thing. He put Cameron Martinez in that, and, you know, nobody else had it. And I was uh, debating, and I was like, well, you know, again, Muskegon Catholic Series transferring they in. They can move up from Division they're, 8 to Division 1. It's, D- it's yeah. De La Salle. Yeah. They're going to be conservative with him. It couldn't be more further from the truth. Only 300 yards. Almost 300 yards. Five touchdowns. Yeah, five touchdowns. This kid yeah. went yeah. insane. And if you see the runs, he's yeah. just, you know, he looks like Darius Jefferson. Yep. Dice. He, did. he yep. did. That's a Muskegon team that, I mean, 
give him credit because he made the cuts, he made the runs, mm -hmm. but that's a pretty good offensive line he's running behind too, which was part of my thought process okay. is that you you have an offensive line like that, you're going to get some holes, you're going to get some opportunities, you're going to get a chance to break into the secondary pretty clean, and mm -hmm. he did the most with those runs. So, I mean, you look at the highlight package that we had, and it was mm -hmm. he, he's got some speed, he's got some wiggle, he's got all the stuff you want from a guy who's going to be running the ball like that. Yeah. I mean, it just, considering Muskegon's schedule, you know, De La Salle, and now they've got Detroit King coming in. We'll talk about that on Thursday because yeah. that's going to be a, a juggernaut of a matchup. Um, but for Cameron to come out and do what he did to mm -hmm. instantly take control of the team and put him under his wing and just really just, uh, you could see it in the kids. Like they just all were like, oh my gosh, I, this run may be continuing, you know, in terms of Muskegon dominance. Yeah. And if you're, conversely, if you're just De La Salle, yeah. been there, done that, okay? Yeah. You, yeah. You, get, you played a tough team. You played yeah. a tough team at their place. This is a team, again, that it looked like it was going to break apart at the seams last year. There are no losses. No. You go there, you win, it's great. You lose, it's a great experience going over there, yeah. getting getting that experience under your belt, going out to Muskegon, and you're coming back home and, and getting into the Catholic League schedule. It's going gonna, it's gonna to reap benefits. All right, the game I, I actually filmed uh, was uh, Cass Tech and River Rouge, and uh, Again, uh, you talk about like methodic. I mean, if I, I would love for there to be a clock, a game clock, because literally every snap before Castex seemed like it took five minutes <laughs> before they actually snapped the ball. And in the end, they have to play clock. So. I know exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm a proponent of that. That rushing um, attack, 300 yards. You know, I'm going to nickname uh, that that fire and ice, thunder and lightning uh, backfield of, of Jaron Mangum and, and Lou Nichols for Cast Tech, the Febreze brothers, because they're so fresh, so clean. <laughs> Every snap, these guys just, they, they love to eat. Um, oh, yeah. They, they complement each other. They feed off each other's energy. It looked like they were going through their playbook. They were, it was almost like a controlled scrimmage at times. This is no... No uh, diss to River Rouge. I think they. I give them and, and give them credit for, for scheduling. Mm -hmm. scheduling. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's just Division One going up against Division Four. Right. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the way I see it. And Corey that. says, "Look, if we want to take the next step, which they want to do, King and East St. Louis got together. This was the nightcap, the the PKC closer, Indianapolis Cathedral, and King played a great game last year with King coming out on top." Uh, this was definitely the coming out party, if you want to call it, for Daquan Finn. We all know him already yeah, yeah. as coming into the season as a great player. It was a coming out party for 2018. That yeah. is for sure. 52-38, uh, they win there, and he was brilliant. On that stage, to do it both ways, uh, three touchdowns rushing, three touchdowns passing, the enormity of it. I got the feeling when I saw them over the summer, mm -hmm. I got the feeling that there's a giant chip on their shoulder. Mm -hmm. He is just, he's something. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, it's been a privilege watching mm -hmm. him for a couple of years because he is, to me, the poster child of watching a guy get better. Right. I've watched him get better. in his veins. He, he does? Yeah. And, I, 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 you know, sometimes I make these over-the-top proclamations. No. 99% no. of the time, I, 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 I prove true on what I'm saying. Um, you know, like there's, there's the a little bit of margin that. for error, but I, I'll go I as far. Alex <laughs> 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 I love Alex Melton. Hey, I don't apologize for anything I said about the human highlight zone, Alex mm -hmm. Melton zone. We're going to see these next couple years yeah, in Miami. Okay. Okay. Um, but I think for for my money, Daquan Finn, this is all due respect to Dewan Mathis and Sam Johnson, Daquan Finn is the best high school quarterback in the state. We're going to take a quick time out. I do want to mention that Extra Point Podcast is brought to you by Lawrence Technological University. Football games begin this weekend, Saturday, Oakland <laughs> University. If you want to get out here, there's still single game tickets available. It's going to be incredible. First football game played in 70 years on campus, so that's awesome. Uh, in fact, I don't think there was ever a game played here on campus. It would be, it'll it'll be it. their first ever game. Yeah, because it was when they were in the 40s, they were not here. Yeah, 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 they're in Detroit. Detroit. They were it's so great right. for yeah. the area. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. really it is. It's, it's, it, and, you know, an opportunity for young players to perhaps stay close to home and get the experience of college football. It's yeah. it's win-win across the board. Absolutely. Hungry Howie's also a sponsor of the podcast. We always appreciate them and the MHSAA. So we're going to take a quick timeout. We'll come back. We're going to do some more quick hits on some other matchups from this weekend, and then we'll take another timeout and come back and wrap up with our Hungry Howie's kind of Mr. Football update and how the guys did this weekend. So stay with us. This is it. I want to be a dermatologist, and though a lot of universities tried to recruit me for basketball, Lawrence Tech had the science curriculum that I wanted. LTU Southfield Campus is a great place to learn, and the classes are small enough that I don't have to wait for office hours to talk to my professors. They're usually right by my side. 
challenging me and guiding me toward a successful future. Lawrence Tech, possible is everything. You ready, Darius? Let's do it. Anybody want an autograph? Autograph? We're here for the stuffed crust pizza. Stuffed crust pizza? Hey, who do you think you are? End of the line, pal. Flavor fanatics love stuffing their faces with our stuffed flavored crust. Get one for only $2 more on any large original round pizza. Hungry? Howie! All right, welcome back to State Champs Extra Point. This was a television show for a long time, our football show. We got two podcasts we're doing each week. This is Extra Point, the weekend recap, the Monday morning quarterback, if you will, even though it's now evening. If you're uh, just tuning in and seeing the premiere, it comes every Monday at 5. Uh, football Forecast is our preview show, which premieres every Thursday at 3. So uh, we talked a lot about uh, what took place at the PKC and the big house and the big game with Muskegon and De La Salle in our previous segment. Uh, let's get some quick hits on uh, what else took place. And if you guys want to make any comments, comments on any of these, Belleville's our number one team right out of the gate. We knew that Brighton and Brighton historically is always going to put their – you know, yeah. fist in the ground. And la including last year. Including yeah. last year. Yep. And uh, this one went down to the wire. Uh, Belleville pulls it out in the final moments, 40 to 35. Well, Brighton had three losses by three points or less last year. Correct. So that's not a bad team no. that they were facing. No. But this is exactly what is going to be good for Belleville about that move to the KLAA is they're going to get tested mm -hmm. week in and week out. They're going to have to play their starters in the fourth quarter. Last year in conference, they outscored their opponents 277 to 7. You know your starters are sitting on the bench for the second half, maybe three quarters. It doesn't do anything for you in the playoffs. And that, in part, is why when you get to the playoffs and you haven't been tested in conference, conversely, yeah, conversely, when they played three KLA teams last year, the scoring margin was 76 to 66. Three tight games. Right. And now they're going to be playing those all through the season, and it's only going to be better for them. Well, they're going to have Livonia Churchill this week. Yep, uh, that's, and we'll talk about that on Thursday. They beat Canton in Canton. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you know, granted, a Beckler less Can you know, Canton. He's yeah. not there coaching. He was on the sideline, though, and he was observing what they was happening. They got to replace his son, too, Lou. Yeah, who I know. A exactly. Pretty good linebacker. Yeah, absolutely. But they've got some really good pieces on that Canton team. So what I'm crediting is Churchill. You know, and uh, and the way that they played. So and there's another there. also yes. Brooks too. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's move on. Paywamo Westphalia. I was shocked by who, the score. Who predicted Paywamo would win that game? I believe you did. I did. Yeah. Thank you. Very I think you were the only one, weren't you? I, I, I believe you were. They won yeah. convincing. Yes, yes, they did. Very much uh, so. Beating Ithaca 38 mm. nothing. Uh, you could not have called. This. And and in the streak. The 73, yeah, 73 game, game regular, regular season streak for Ithaca. And not lost since 2009. And I think wow, in a regular season insane. game. And I was yeah. looking at some articles. Yes. I think the last time they were shut out, Ithaca was shut out was in 2004. That's yeah. wow. probably yeah. accurate. Well, it's, again, it's going to be one of those where it's good for both teams because right. you get stuff on film, you you play a good opponent, and and trust me, it, this is not going to be the end of the Ithaca season. Mm -hmm. No, no. They're, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with in the D6 playoffs when yeah. they get there. But... For both teams, it's a great test right out of the box, and you get to work in some new players. You get to, uh, both, both teams had a new quarterback, so you get that on film. I think Ithaca ran with two yeah. quarterbacks. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's 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 a good test right out of the box. Yeah. But, yeah, it says more about Puamo West, really, I think, than it does about Ithaca. College oh. was packed to the gills, That's, mostly Ithaca fans. Yeah. Two powers coming together. Mm -hmm. uh, East Grand Rapids, you know, they, they kind of went away for a little bit, but then they came right back. And uh, and again, I love the scheduling there. They always, you know, the the tough teams in the GR area. Zealand East comes away with again a solid win, uh, 36 27 And they do like their own little like prep kickoff classic out yep. there. It's yes. called the Gridiron yep. Classic. So, yep. and I think it's at it's at Grand Valley State, yep. right? Yep. So you know, shout out to the West Side of the State doing you know a showcase showing four or five, four games. That, Had the yeah. opportunity to call a few of those games in the past and and talk about atmosphere. Yeah. I mean, it's great. There's there's this little road that winds to the stadium at Grand Valley, and I kid you yeah. not, it's, it's it's yeah. almost like there are little camps. Like yeah, yeah. there's this school's camp and yeah. there's that yep. school camp, yeah. and it's it's a really cool mm -hmm. atmosphere. I I'm so glad that places do that. Like you talk about Alma, go up the yeah. gut of, of Michigan, yeah. and you get something like that. Man, that's a great time for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's why we love 
doing what we do. There's no doubt about it. Muskegon Mona Shores came out of the gate, beat East Kentwood 48-38. We were concerned. Did, now, we, did we predict that game? I believe I, we I did. East Kentwood. And, yeah, and we, we did. Muskegon Mona Shores. You did that one, too? That's Swami. Swami. That's Swami. Oh, I'm almost positive. We'll have to look back at Dang. the Dang. I think but, I need to uh, show up here on for <laughs> yeah, the forecast wow. and challenge you on some of these points. Uh, you know what but, makes it even more impressive is but that. But we were worried about Muskegon being able to handle East Kentwood's size. Yeah. They've yeah. got beasts right. yep. that yep. come after and want to collect and kill. Sure. Uh, obviously, we're able to do that, putting up 48. Well, what's more impressive about that victory is in the uh, last, I think, week or two, uh, Mona Shore has just lost one of their best players, and Demari yeah. Roberson's out for the year. So, Ooh. you know, they were able to bounce back from that and, and, you know, put that to the side. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's like next guy up. And, right. and guys like Jacob Wahlberg, uh, their, their senior captain linebacker, uh, you know, uh, you know, just, you know, display the kind of leadership he needed to do to, to get everyone on the same page and, and overcome that loss. And We talked just a little bit that Rochester Adams and Rochester had a great little mm -hmm. rivalry game. We see it in basketball on a lot of times. Uh, don't often get to see it in football, but uh, double OT and uh, Adams able to win. We're expecting Adams to be. You well, they're, know, the, they're the defending. The, you know, they yeah. they tied with, or they shared the OAA red title right. with uh, West Bloomfield last mm -hmm. year. Um, so you know they're 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 replacing a lot uh, via graduation. But one of the side stories to keep an eye on: uh, Carter Ferris, their junior quarterback, another one of these guys that looked really good in um, spot duty last year as a backup. Well, you know, one of the teams that uh, I don't think nearly gets the respect it should because, you know, Jackson is just a part of Michigan that for whatever reason just kind of falls in the cracks of right. coverage mm -hmm. and stuff. But we've seen what Lumen Christie, Lumen Christie yeah. has been able to do, not just in recent times, but in all times. Like in, the, been, in the state champs era. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I mean, they've been doing it, and uh, they're a program that just continually just is – they come out just like going to Ford Field, and it, it, that was the first time I saw them last year, last year's team at that game, and it's just like, man, this is this team is just badass. You know what I mean? I mean, they just they're gonna run the ball. They're gonna the linebackers are gonna eat you up, and you know had a good schedule in in getting West Catholic. You know who is uh, who will play whoever, and uh, thirty four to twelve convincing win. That, that's interesting. I, I never thought of it that way because you hear the west side, you hear the east side, you hear Flint, Saginaw, and, and Jackson's kind of its own entity. Yeah. That's a big win. I, you know, I don't yeah. know much about it other than you know this is something where you look at the score or anything. But when you go and you beat you know West Catholic by twenty two, yeah. uh, that's a statement. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. think anybody's going to deny right. that. Brother Rice blanks UD Jesuit. <laughs> uh, obviously, there was a lot of storylines off the field for uh, what was going on with Greg Piscopink and. Uh, you know his father in recovery, and it's just how emotionally he would feel. Uh, but the, he was also the defensive coordinator, so yeah. you know Adam had to uh, step in and, and and the head coach and and take over the defense. Stepped in pretty well. Stepped yeah. in pretty well. Had his defense been a so shutout. Is this more obviously, Brother Rice? I expected them to to do. Well. I expected them to win this game. Uh, UD Jesuit. Where do you see them? In well, they're terms they're of moving they're forward? transitioning uh, yeah. from New coaches. coaches. Mm -hmm. Coach O's over at Shrine yeah. now. Yeah. Problem yeah. is, is that they only have like 20, 30 players on yeah. the team, and no, you think of UAD. It's a far cry from the the, the Elijah Collins and Scotty, Scotty Nelson. Yes, exactly. They have a freshman team, no JV team. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if this is uh, more what Rice was able to do, or just Jesuits just well, I kind think of in, the, in like you said, uh, got to figure things out. I mean, Rice has a has a real underrated playmaker and Colin Gardner, in addition to Greg Piscopink, the quarterback, the junior quarterback. Yeah. Let me let me say this, though. Brother Rice was a big question mark this year, right? What Did we learn anything about Brother Rice in, in a game like this? And I'm not trying to be disrespectful, right. but to me, yeah. I, I think I didn't know what Brother Rice was. Okay, is this the Rice that's ready to take a step back up, or are they going to be kind of the meandering Rice of the last two years? I don't know if we got an answer to we'll that. We'll see. Piscopink's 8-0 as a starter now. I think the question was, you know, based on uh, you know him emotionally. How he's you know he's run. He's this is team. We talked about Chippewa Valley last week, and we feel that they're going to be uh, a team to beat in the MAC. Uh, whether they are the team to beat will play itself. Or out. they could be one of the top teams in the state too. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, some people are really starting to, to push them up the ladder. Obviously, we love Scotty Merchant, and we love what he's been able to do there. The culture that he's been able to build there. Mike Giannone leaving might have left have been really a, an advantage for Chippewa Valley in terms of uh, Scott Merchant now, the one that that they talk about. But no, you know this is no uh, discredit to Dakota. They beat Celine. Sch scheduled a good good matchup against Celine, 36 uh, 21. And again, I, you know where where Celine is at, we shall see. But Joe Pauk is a great coach, mm -hmm. so you knew those kids were going to be ready. Uh, Chip Valley may be ready to 
take the oh, next step. Uh, if Daquan Finn's the best quarterback in the state overall for a high school football yeah. player, Tommy Schuster, most underrated quarterback, at least in Metro Detroit, um, right now, you know, thrown for 50 touchdowns over the last two years, and just you know the definition of a leader, uh, you know, can drop back, can 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 go surgical on secondaries. All right, finally, I want to wrap it up just because I saw the score and I couldn't believe it. I had to like check it three times to make sure yep. that yeah. that East English Village was beat by Detroit Cody, 67 to six. Rod Oden, the coach, went to Harper Woods. There was, remember how many like initially were going to like Harper Woods? There was like, like ten or twelve kids yeah, that initially, and then yeah. the NCAA or the uh, MHSA, yes. MHSA yes. stepped in and, yeah. and started looking at some of the paperwork. Yes, exactly. But at the end of the day, he still got uh, four of his his best players moved over there, yeah. and uh, they're they're, they're yeah. big time um, difference makers and, mm-hmm. and and leaving big voids to fill at, at East England. And, and they beat and they beat Divine Child like forty nine to six. Right. When we come back, we're going to talk about our Hungry Howie's Mister Football race and where the uh how some of those guys do we've already kind of alluded to a lot of it but we'll recap it so stay with us extra point we'll be back to close it out today we'd like to talk to you about football rules changes for the upcoming season the biggest rules change in high school football across the country this year involved player safety when any required player equipment is missing or worn improperly an official's timeout shall be declared and the player must come out of the game for at least one down. This includes players not wearing knee or thigh pads or rolling their pants above the knees and equipment such as shoulder pads or back pads being exposed. The other change continues to hone the definition of a defenseless player, this time affecting the quarterback once he's thrown the ball and becomes a passer. Until that time, he's defined as a runner and as a passer, he continues to be defenseless until the pass ends or he moves to participate in the play. The penalty for hitting a defenseless player is 15 yards. For more information about football, please visit the MHSAA website. My passion is architecture. I don't want to sit around passively studying. I need to create. In our architecture studios at Lawrence Tech, We collaborate with students, faculty, and professionals from around the world. And from day one, we design using the same industry standard software that architecture firms use. I really feel like I'm designing my own future here. Lawrence Tech. Possible is everything. Fundraising should be fresh, flavorful, and simple. We have the perfect solution at Hungry Howie's, Dough Razor. Your team or school can sell paper pizza certificates that can be redeemed for one medium pizza at participating locations. Hungry Howie's makes it easy. It's just a little mini pizza box, but we make lots of money, lots of dough. Go to doughraiser.com to learn more and sign up. Your next fundraiser comes with flavored crust. Welcome to Hungry Howie's Dough Razor. Welcome back to State Champs Extra Point. Uh, we have talked a lot about some of the games that took place this weekend. If there are games that you think we need to talk about maybe in our football forecast, you certainly can email us. You go to our brand new redesigned website, statechampsnetwork.com. Find the email contact page. Contact us at statechampsnetwork.com is the email. And we'll talk about it. We'll mention it. Uh, if you also want to talk about uh, after the weekend uh, some games that you think we should comment here or have Maybe we'll do a mailbag and get some viewer comments. We, we're kind of open to the format and how things will progress. Uh, but hope you're enjoying it. We've got one more segment to go. And again, you can always uh, depend on Extra Point being uh, premiering right around 5 o'clock every Monday and football co- forecast right about 3 o'clock every Thursday. So just keep that in your craw. Uh, all right, so Mr. Football, the Hungry Hours Mr. Football race is off and running. Obviously, we had some phenomenal performances uh, from – the likes of Daquan Finn, uh, Jaron Mangum had a very good game. Uh, as I was kind of looking through some of the capsules to uh, talk about some of the guys that uh, that we had going, obviously we talked about uh, Daron McKinney and what he was able to do in even though a, a tough loss for them, he was mm-hmm. the, the lone bright spot. Um, what do you think of this top 10 right now? And obviously we have a watch list going right now. Our top 10 currently, I'm sure we put it 
on your screen now. Jaron Mangum, Detroit Cast Tech running back. Sam Johnson, the Wall Lake Western quarterback. Dewan Mathis, the Oak Park quarterback. Jaquan Finn, the King quarterback. Tate Halleck, who is uh, kind of does a little bit of everything for Forest Hill Central. Roderick Hurd, the running back DB. Uh, Trey Mosley out of West Bloomfield. Julian Barnett and Mosley's a wide receiver, for those that know. Uh, the defense back, Julian Barnett, although he does play receiver as well, had a 30-yard TD in, in his game. Uh, Devil Washington, Bay City Central, uh, and Deron McKinney. Our watch list, Austin Brown out of Madison Heights. Madison, the quarterback, that was just you got to get. I, I think, I think we, we, we got to really push to possibly get him into the, yeah. into the, into yeah. the yeah. district yeah. football uh, yeah. a top ten. I mean, yeah. This is a guy that, although he's playing Division Seven can just dissect a secondary uh, 3,000 yards last year, yeah. 33 touchdowns, and, and he, he only played a half yeah. uh, on, on, on Saturday, ran for uh, 133, 133 through for, oh, ran for 115, ran for 133, just, uh, yeah. and, and I think he was something like 10 of 14 on his passes, and, and three of those uh, incompletions were just drops right, right on the numbers. Sure. Well, I know that we are going to have to make a decision because we know that Cameron Martinez is going to go into the into the top ten as well. So if we're going to put two in, two are going to have to come out. Uh, we do have a process. We're not really going to kind of break it down here. No. <laughs> uh, but, but we'll go through it. And, again, the great thing about Mr. Football and what we've been able to do over the last, this is the 11th year now we've had the award, is that it's, a, it's like kind of like college football's Heisman Trophy race. Mm -hmm where you see kind of guys come in and then they it's go fluid. out. It's fluid. It's fluid. Mm -hmm. And then Absolutely. they play themselves back in, they play themselves out. Uh, watch list guys come in, a guy can come in and jump a watch list, mm -hmm. which is what Martinez is doing. So, again, it's, it's one of these things. In the end, the most important thing for you out there that is watching or listening is that you need to go to our website and you need to vote. Okay. So if you like someone so much and you're saying to yourself, um, all right, so uh, Devil Washington, for instance, you know, Frankenmuth won that game pretty handily. It was kind of a surprise, actually, that they were able to win the way they did, 35-12, and maybe he didn't ha have as much of a contribution. But you think, you know what, he needs to stay in this competition because I know the kind of kid he is, and he and I want him to be in the running for Mr. Football. Well, you do have a say. You can vote for him. So if you vote, this is the only major award in the state that allows the fans to participate like we do and, and it's important that we do it this way and we've had a lot of great success doing it this way because you have now a vested interest in these guys if you vote for him if he stays at the top of the list we can never remove him so right now and i have not gone through the numbers i don't know who is leading the vote uh but whoever it is no matter how we feel he's staying in another week so that's how it works so go to our website statechampsnetwork.com and you can vote for your guy there. Uh, another thing that we've uh, decided to do, and we talked about this on the forecast, and this will get up on the website over the next few days, hopefully, is we have so many great linemen, so many great offensive, defensive, linebackers. We saw some play great. Uh, Justin Rogers just is one to uh, talk about and the way he played this weekend. We felt they needed their own award because it was unfair mm -hmm. that they were kind of put into Mr. Football and then kind of as things play out, those high stats or whatever just seem to garner more attention than the guy who's just pancaking someone every time somebody comes across. Love that logic because, I, I mean, in my mind, you have to be super extraordinary, not just extraordinary, but super extraordinary to, to kind of – you know, do better than, say, Daquan Finn. Yeah. Using Daquan yeah. Fizz, Finn as an example, right. what he did this past right. week. Well, that doesn't take anything away from the guy that completely dominated his position right. in the trenches. So I think it's important. I love that, that we've done this because yeah. it's important to recognize these guys. Because I'll tell you what, if you watch that portion of the game, I mean, that's that's the battle within the battle itself. You know, there are some battles that, that aren't even being seen, right. and you're watching a guy dominate. So on a different level, yes, a guy can be as dominating, if not as uh, more dominating, than a guy that put up, you know, the Sega numbers and everything. I'm showing my age. PlayStation numbers. How's that? In the, in the traditional format, uh, the guys in the trenches, the linebackers, they're just they're, just, they're handicapped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yes. The fact that we're doing this kind of removes the handicap. Yes, and we have so many outstanding linemen that are going to make waves at major universities mm -hmm. next mm -hmm. year and many years after, and most mm -hmm. likely in the NFL if they can stay healthy. So help me God. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's the important thing why we wanted to do this. 
Uh, you know, I use, I like to use Matt's terms. We've got the pretty boys and the big uglies, uh, but that's okay because I think those guys would take that as a point of pride. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, that uh, mm -hmm. you know that that they've got to put their hand in the dirt, and Lord knows you don't know when it, what what happens. That's what football is all you don't about. Know, you no. don't want to know what happens between the offensive the pretty, and defensive line, and what what goes on in there. The pretty the, boys the, couldn't do what they the, do if it wasn't for the big nasty. Right. No, no doubt, and it's nasty sometimes in between there. So, uh, but we love it. That's what we love about football, and that's what makes it such a great sport. Is that you've got a, contributions from just a dearth of characters. And uh, anyway, so. The Amble Award is up. We've got our top ten. We've got our watch list. Uh, we'll talk about if we're going to make any changes. We probably won't as we haven't hit, given really an opportunity for some of those to vote. I know that uh, Burkhorse's uh, father was like, oh, my gosh, she's off the Mr. Football list already. We hadn't even played a game. So I had to explain to him that, no, we uh, have transferred it. They're really excited about it. I think it's going to obviously uh, get a lot of traction. Uh, around the state as we get that going. So uh, that will be up on the website so we can talk about it more on the forecast uh, this 30, this Thursday. Anything else you guys want to add, gentlemen? No. All right. I think we had a great week one. Yep. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, if you did not catch state champs, you can watch uh, replays uh, throughout the week on Fox Sports Detroit. Just check the guide for that. Uh, of course, you can consume it anytime you like, <laughs> uh, in any fashion you like, digitally. Of course, state champs YouTube page is always blowing up. Hmm. We've got it on Facebook. We'll have uh, stuff on Twitter. It's already there. you got to make sure you follow us at State Champs Net. Uh, we did start our first Indiana program, so awesome. uh, that aired on Sunday. So uh, we've got it going now in two markets. So we've got uh, a lot happening here at the network. We want to hear from you, so stay engaged with us. Please follow us. We, we finally hit 20,000 followers on Twitter, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a great coup for us, and we're excited, and we want to keep it growing. Uh, and, again, it's input from you guys that help us do that. Hopefully you enjoy this show again. Tell us what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see more of, what you want to see less of, or you want to see that you haven't seen yet. And uh, we'll talk about it because uh, that's what we love to do. We all love mm -hmm. high school sports, and we love talking high school football. It's a great time of year. So, with that said, <laughs> we will see you on Thursday for the football forecast at 3 o'clock. Until then, take care.